wildlife poaching is big business, worth more than $17 billion a year and growing. The slaughter is being fueled by demand from Asia, where rhino horn is a status symbol and believed to even cure cancer. Only one thing stands between the rhino and heavily armed poachers. This series follows the next generation of elite anti-poaching rangers as they are put through intense military training. Once ready, they head out into what has become a wildlife war zone. Every day, training has got harder. Some trainees have already dropped out. I'm gutted. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Camping in the bush didn't make for a restful night. And investigating their first dead rhino shocked them all. I was literally hacking with an axe through flesh and bone with blood splattering everywhere. It's day 16. Nine trainees started the course. Only six are left, and they are about to face their biggest challenge. Today is called make or break day. The corporal will be pushing them to their limits. What were you guys doing when I got back? Both physically and mentally. You guys were fast asleep, is what you were doing. Especially you two. You didn't even wake up when the rest of your team left. You were lying there sleeping. Why? Yeah, I know that uh, I let the team down, but the way he yelled at me, he yelled at me like I'm nothing. I know I messed up, but I didn't like it at all. Now move it! Move your horses! Okay, we separate the boys from the men. Come, move, move, move! Do you have the wall power? Push it, the push it. Don't stop moving, Come on! Unkala will do Ubalega, Sisuga, I'm really worried about Lunga. If he can't get himself up that road, um, I'm going to have to fail him. I can't let him pass the course. Come on, keep trying. Keep trying. You're going to do this by yourself. Come on. If I send him out to the bush and something has to happen, maybe he gets chased by a buffalo. There's a tree he has to climb. If I find that he's been killed because he couldn't climb that tree, I know I haven't done my job. Jump, jump, jump. Guys, you have finished. Go back. Help your teammates. Don't just sit around. Jump, move it. Move. Pull it out. Ten, nine, eight. You guys are going to run to the train tracks. Turn left. You're going to run until you see me. Move. Move. Now, the pain really starts. 
unfortunately, with my luck, um, just maybe two or three days before, the old uh, knee injury that I had from a car accident resurfaced, and uh, I think uh, some of the pins or something constricted this nerves, and it's pain shooting up my back. But yeah, I just kept telling myself, you can't stop. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be over any faster. So I just keep going and every time I think I can't take another step and then I take another step. It's an important lesson for them all. If you're injured in the bush, there's no alternative but to keep going. The physical aspects of this, of this course is, is the things that I thought I would you know, be quite good at. You're going to carry Fisser for one kilometer until you fetch the tires. Having to be the person that my teammates have to pick me up and carry me because I literally can't walk. Like, man, me not feel so good. Watch out for his knee, guys. Carry him properly. Yeah, but, you know, things happen. There's nothing I could do about it. Uh, as we see Jens van Basni, so ons nie uh, mekaar gehelp het om te draai nie, ons so gesê dit nie, ek sal nie vir Christian draai nie, want hy waar nie waarom nie, maar ons het ons was een span gewees en nie as een span nie, as een familie lid ook. Een vrouwde voos klem die berg, so hastig en so lastig, vrouwde voos klem die berg, so hastig en so lastig, vrouwde voos klem die berg, om die voos dat te verleg, hoera ver! Fred heeft ons altijd een uh, encourage om een uh, song gesing voor ons om, 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 om hier uh, kracht te krijgen zo. So. The training is working. They've learned that survival in the bush is about teamwork. When things get tough, only the team can get you through. God again to me, I'm no more going to allow me to go back. I can't 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 go and the other track to the end of the two. What are you doing? 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 What are to be fit. So, Why didn't you join the army? Why are you here at ProTrack? Why did you come to us? I came to ProTrack because I want to fight against the poachers who poach our animals. That was the answer that I could ever. I can give up uh, because man give up is, is nothing. It's like zero. I, back to, I go back to zero again. Because they motivated each other, 
all six trainees made it through make or break day. It's a great result. Wow. That's good. We said that the whole bio is fat. That was my life. It's now not so big this year, but that was that was raw. How many times have you tightened your belt so far? Two times. <laughs> <laughs> wow, two times. For the first time in two weeks, there's fresh fruit and meat on the table. Hey, hey, mate, so what is this? It's not a potato, my price. What is this? Hey, it's meat. Yeah, yeah. my bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my bro. This is you potato, say, say my bro. As a reward for working so hard, the next day is a lot easier. But some of them have been dreading it. That is the most dangerous snake in Africa. It's a puff adder. Remember, that snake bites more people than any other snake. I'm going to use this stick as my foot. It looks kind of like a foot. I'm going to use it to bang on the grass to create vibration. Remember, snakes don't have ears. So let's see if I was walking in a bush and I walk past the puff adder, if it's going to bite me. I'm pretending I don't see it. I'm walking in a bush. Walking, 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 and what happened? Let's try again for just in case I was lucky. I'm still walking in the bush. Walking, 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 and what happened? Still didn't bite. Satukbona ba I lendo akano kam go I I take ball on this agucha. What if you step on it? Let's find out. Still in the bush. Don't see it. Walking, walking, walking. Oops, one, two, three, four, five. What happened? Nothing. And I'm sure if it was one of you, you wouldn't go like this on a wild snake. One, two, three, four. Why is a young guy does a go my as as he call it a little see born up? What again? Ibe inyani ayenza pamgu etu. Remember, most snakes feel us coming with the vibration and they will move away. But that one, it doesn't move away. It will rely on its camouflage, hoping that you don't spot it. Because of that, people think they can just quickly grab behind the snake's head without the snake biting. And that's how they get bitten. Because that is the fastest striking snake in the world. That snake can strike in a quarter of a second. When I went to Snake Park and I saw that no snakes are not striking, yeah, they just giving you a warning that hey, be careful, don't step on me, don't touch me. Now the days pass quickly, but there's still a lot to learn, including survival skills, how to collect water make fire. Rifle training starts. The most important lesson they must learn is when to use a gun and why. I'm approaching your door. Out, out, out. out. I'm approaching your car. Get out of your vehicle slowly. Out, 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 out. And if they stop a car, they need to know where poachers hide their weapons. There's things in that vehicle which are illegal, and there's things placed in that vehicle which you should notice and should make you be suspicious of it. The minute I say go and we leave here, they're going to be timing you. You've got three minutes. OK, you ready? Do you understand? Sure, sure. OK, let's go. Suspicion's a gut feeling, eh? When you've got that gut feeling, something doesn't fit, concentrate on it. Anything suspicious. Okay, you've got a screwdriver? Carry on. You've got three minutes. 
kangela na kuinda wenga kile kanga uivule moto wenza yongi ndo indebe si nzi leti na na bato ba msi esa kanga la wenda wazi kile kile iliyonde ba ngala ba sana kanga sikuwa zuku zuku fuma na izinde zbiz fiki we paya. Okay, thumbs up. Alright, guys, you're all pretty happy that vehicle is safe. If we look at the back of this panel, what's wrong? Some of the screws are out. Okay, if we come back to the front of the vehicle, what do we see? Screwdriver. So he's using it for something. You've got screws missing, you've got a screwdriver. Okay. We open the door, what's here? We've got the screws in here. Okay. When you search a vehicle, when you search anything, type your time and observe, watch. Panels, very important. For instance, when you stop a vehicle, the first thing you check for is what? Has the vehicle got keys in? If it hasn't got keys in the ignition, what does that mean? It's been stolen. <laughs> Take it out, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> One rhino horn. So we come here, we open the bonnet. We look at this engine. What's wrong with the engine? The fault is right, let's open it. Okay, we got ammunition. We got the rifle down there, boys. <laughs> okay, let's take that rifle out. Okay, there's one times 303 rifle. It's designed to have a silencer on. Ideal for poaching. Okay, and there's the rounds that you all missed. Now that you all look like proper idiots. One rhino horn. One hunting rifle, four rounds of ammunition, and one nine millimeter. My goodness gracious. We lost a big bone. And we're going to save Rhino with you lot. <laughs> we're going to try, eh? When we did the vehicle search with Vince, we, as a group, all of us did <laughs> very, very poorly. But we learned a lot. If a uh, suspicion is raised, uh, analyze the car immediately. So that was a, it was a very good exercise. Local villagers have reported a snake in the kitchen of a house. It's a good chance for the trainees to learn on the job. Okay, how's it guys? Good, good. We have a problem here. I've just been called there's a snake uh, somewhere in the room there. So let's go and have a look. I'm not sure what snake it is. Okay, the snake was last seen in that area there. So I'm just going to approach and have a look. Oh, there it is. It's a python, guys. Python, it's non-venomous. We don't want to disturb the snake because this snake, it might strike. Oh, that's huge. There it is, guys, seen it? Somebody grab those bags for me. Okay, so we need to take it outside so we can put it in a bag. Uh, in the capture box there, there is a big bag. Someone bring that. Come help us, guys. Open the bag. So what we're going to do... Yeah, they strike. That's why I need to be very strong. Someone grab it there in the body. Okay, bring the bag. So we're going to put the body first and then the tail, the head lastly. Okay, Okay, the body nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna count three. When I go say three, you need to close this whole bag and twist it. Okay, so one, two, three, quickly. Nicely. The snake will be released well away from any houses. Three. Two, one, go. That afternoon, the team returns to rifle training. Loading and making the gun safe 
has to become an automatic reflex. Come, move it, move it, move it, guys. From here, you're gonna run. You're running together as one unit. Do you understand? Yes. You have 15 minutes, go. Come, move it, go. Once on patrol, they could chase poachers for hours. This exercise tests if they can use a gun safely and accurately when they're tired and under pressure. Come, move it. Hurry up, get in line. And the stomachs. Today, you listen. More than any other day in this course, today is when you listen. Push up positions. Hop. Remember, I decide when you finish. It is up to me. You waste my time, I will waste your time. Do you understand? Yeah. We were tired. We had to go to the bush, do the shooting. Yeah, well, it was pretty tough. The poachers have struck again. Another rhino has been killed. The trainees have been called in to search the surrounding area for clues, however small. An autopsy must be carried out. If they can find the bullet that killed the rhino, they may be able to identify the gun that was used. It looks as if the bullet may be lodged in the animal's stomach. It's the best result possible. They now have evidence that could lead them to the poachers. Three days later, Vince receives a tip off. Vincent, how are you? Continue. Sure, sure. Yeah. So you got information for me? Yes, the big information for you. What? The informant tells Vince where the poachers plan to strike and what car they'll be in. Vince contacts the police and a roadblock is set up. Rounds of ammunition are found in the car and suspects are arrested. A more thorough search reveals a rifle hidden beneath the bumper of the car. If the bullet they found in the rhino carcass matches this rifle, it could lead to a successful prosecution. And if found guilty, the poachers could face a sentence of 10 years or more. It's been a good week. The trainees have helped remove a problem snake and their hard work also led to the arrest of suspected poachers. But they're tired. It's now day 27. They're desperate for the course to be over. In the next episode, the trainees face one last challenge before they can qualify. Lionel and Lunga choose to head back home to the Eastern Cape to look for work. On their first patrol, the team of North immediately finds itself tracking a poacher. <laughs> 